I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, my guest today is an author, international speaker, and e-commerce entrepreneur with more than 11 years experience outsmarting digital algorithms. She has been featured in Forbes, has spoken at an array of digital marketing industry events around the world, including Affiliate East, Affiliate West, and SheCommerce Affiliate World. She splits her time between managing her multiple six-figure e-commerce businesses and consulting for Fortune 500 companies. She joins us today, ready to share her secrets on breaking free from the rat race. Luna Vega, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Super oh, excited my, to be here today. <laughs> my pleasure. It's exciting for me. It's exciting for the viewers. Now, before we got started, you were telling me you were able to build a six-figure e-commerce business by simply working a few hours a day, all the while traveling the world without having a product, buying inventory, needing a website, or having any technical skills. It all sounds too good to be true, but... It is real, isn't it? Tell me about your journey. Absolutely. And anyone can do this. I was in shock when I first heard about the power of print on demand. And it took me a while to essentially figure out what's the best way to get started. And as someone who has a background in digital marketing, I felt like I knew all the answer and I was going to be able to go from zero to sales in record time. And it didn't really pan out that way. I actually had to learn what the best practices are in order to start getting sales. And it was an ongoing journey, if you will. Absolutely. Now you talk about printing on demand. For our viewers at home who don't know what this is and why it's a benefit to entrepreneurs like yourself, tell me about printing on demand. Absolutely. So print on demand essentially is kind of cutting out any need to have inventory. So a lot of people do Amazon and what it requires them to do is search warehouses and different fulfillment companies who will ship the items directly to Amazon. And so what happens is that you have a lot of money upfront that's tied up in inventory. With print on demand, you're working directly with suppliers in the US and in Europe who already have sort of blank canvases, whether it's t-shirts, in my case, I sell jewelry and I even sell watches like this item, which mm -hmm. I don't know if you I can see. see. It. Yep, it looks like a beautiful watch. And essentially, um, I'm working with local suppliers and all they're doing is adding my personal branding or messages within these items. And so all I have to do is focus on the marketing. In my case, I focus my time in uploading my listings to Etsy because I don't need a website. And so all my costs and energy are essentially in coming up with concepts and ideas. And then once I get a sell, my supplier does all the heavy lifting in which they'll ship the item directly to my customers and they will also print the items accordingly. That's wonderful, especially in this pre-COVID age where people are dreaming about how do I work from home? How do I start my own business? How do I get involved in e-commerce? They see successful entrepreneurs out there such as yourself, but they need the how-tos and that's what you're supplying, the how-tos, correct? Absolutely. And the thing is too, like you mentioned, everybody is on a budget these days, right? And so the beauty of print on demand is that it allows you to do this with very limited budget. You don't need to spend a lot of money on a website. You don't need to spend money on an inventory. And this is the easiest way to get started and dabble with selling online. Absolutely, and it's your design. You're designing what you'd like on your watch, for example, what kind of watch face it will have, what kind of movement it will have, what kind of strap it'll have. It becomes Luna's watch, but, you don't have to have a hundred watches sitting around in your basement ready to send out to customers. It's being printed on demand. Exactly. So essentially like the way it works with the watch is that I create the card in the back of the car of the watch. And then I give my customer the ability to engrave within the watch. All the watches are the same. Those are the ones that the supplier use. And essentially once I get a sell based on the different niches or different messages I come up with, it's shipped directly to the customer. So really, I would say part of the work is understanding where there's opportunities in the market 
And like I said, this is something that in the past, I thought that I was going to be able to crack the code overnight simply because I had a background in digital marketing, but it took me, me going to conferences and networking and really sort of like unveiling uh, going behind the curtains, right? And unveiling the secret to understanding what was the key to really make this happen. Awesome. Well, it sounds like a fabulous journey. Tell me a little bit more about your personal background and what actually drove you to start your online business. Absolutely. So I was living in New York City. I had actually a very successful career working of uh, the corporate ladder as a project manager slash digital marketing consultant. And I was just exhausted. I was working 60, 80 hour weeks living in New York and didn't have time for my personal life, didn't have time to take vacations, didn't have time to take care of my health. And I knew that I wanted something better for myself. I just did not want to be tied to a desk, tied to a soul sucking job and see my life just being wasted away working for someone else. Absolutely. And that's how most of us were living and working prior to COVID. There's been a paradigm shift now that maybe I don't have to work this hard. Maybe I don't have to put in that many hours. Maybe I don't need to commute to, my, to a city that's eight miles away and it takes me two hours to get there. So your timing is impeccable. And I think that's part of being a successful entrepreneur as well. Absolutely. But anybody, again, can do this. It's just a matter of having the right knowledge, the right tools in order to get started. I think a lot of people, what happens when they start an online business is they get defl deflated early on because it's just not working out for them. Right. So, and so essentially what happens is that they start thinking that it's all in oaks, if you will. But once you start seeing results and you realize like, oh, actually this works, then it's just kind of catapults and it enables you to get better at it and actually start making a full-time income like I have. And because of this, what I've discovered, I've been able to travel the world. I've been a digital nomad for a few years. Um, I just work a few hours a week now simply because I have VAs who help me with my stores. And then every all the, mechan the mechanism to put this in place has are, is already there. So it's just a matter of me logging in a few hours a week and making sure that the machine is properly oiled and I just keep on getting the income coming in. So it's great. Wonderful. Yeah, residual income, there's nothing better. That's for sure. You spoke about VAs. What exactly is a VA? Yeah, so I have virtual assistants oh, who help okay. me manage sort of like the day-to-day. -day, and that's made the whole world a difference. And when you're starting out, obviously you might not have the opportunity to hire a VA. But the beauty of Etsy and the reason I love teaching people how to uh, sell on Etsy is simply because you don't need a website. And Etsy is kind of like a search engine, if you will. Mm -hmm. So meaning that just like Amazon, customers go on Etsy to actually actively look for gifts. So that's already half the battle. However, as a print on demand store owner, what you need to know is how to compete with other sellers, how to attract your customer for them to click on your listing, and also what kind of design and what kind of tags you need to use. Like there's just a, a lot of different elements that are going to help you get the sell. And a lot of people will think like, oh, I need marketing or I need to find a way to drive traffic to my store. And actually that's not, that's not true because like I mentioned, like people go on Etsy actively looking for gifts. So it's just a matter of having the right combination in order to be successful. Absolutely, absolutely. And these are some of the topics you cover thoroughly in your course that you're offering. Tell me about your course. I know one thing when I was looking for your course that I like best was it comes with you. You get a personal mentor right. that you can contact when you sign up for your course. And it sounds terrific. Tell me a little bit about it. Absolutely. So I've realized through the process that having a coach to help you makes all the difference. And like I said, I was really lucky because I know everybody in the industry, in the e-commerce industry. So I was able to get a lot of help that everyday people don't necessarily have. So being able to talk to me and enabling you to kind of unstuck you 
when you're having issues or things are just not working out. And additionally from that, I teach you the strategies that are currently working because I have multiple print on demand stores. So I know what's working. So that makes all the difference. And that's going to sort of help catapult your growth versus you trying to figure it out, watching numerous YouTube videos by individuals that you don't know whether or not they're an authority in the space and whether or not they actually are successful. So sort of cutting the noise and having a roadmap that you can easily follow along with me coaching you through the way you guaranteed for success. Awesome. And it's so important to have a coach. It's so important to have a mentor. And it's wonderful that in this digital age that somebody can come online and just connect with someone like yourself and have that mentor in their back pocket that they can turn to to say, hey, it's been six months. My sales are this. Is it normal? Should I invest in this website? Should I do A, B, and C? Someone like yourself who's been engaged in the corporate world, who is also an entrepreneur and is also an educator, is a terrific resource. Is there something you wish you had known when you started out? Absolutely. I wish I would have realized that you don't know what you don't know. And we don't really understand that until we start learning what it actually takes to be successful. So I'm the typical New Yorker. I'm very arrogant, or at least I was for a really long time. I was like, I work in digital marketing. I know how to crack this code. I'm going to get it. I'm going to watch a few YouTube videos and figure it out. Oh boy, I was so wrong because with anything, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so I was working with Fortune 500 companies who have multi-million dollar budgets very different beast than working on my own, trying to create a print on demand store from the ground up with very limited budgets. So I wish I would have been more humble earlier on, and I would have used a little bit of capital in order to help my journey. I would have been there much faster versus me trying to figure it out. I wasted a lot of time doing so. And it's not till I sort of humbled up and sort of sought at after different friends in the industry and, and, you know, even had a few people helping me here and there that really things started to take off for me. So I really wish I would have been more humble. (laughs) Well, it's easy to understand, you know, you have, have energy, you have talent, you expect you'll be able to figure out the rest as you go along, but sometimes you need somebody to break down the process for you. I know as a broadcaster and actor, you're only called into auditions so many times before they say, okay, we're not going to see Logan anymore. So if you've worked with a great coach who tells you exactly what to expect when you get into that casting room, then you're that much ahead of the game, particularly in a highly competitive field. And everything is a highly competitive field nowadays. Tell me about some of the roadblocks that you faced early on. Well, I did not understand what my consumers wanted to buy. So I had a very different idea of what was going to do well versus now I look at sort of the progression and my listings that I uploaded at the very beginning were very generic. So I would write, for instance, to give you an example, right? Like I would have a necklace and also it was to my daughter. I love you very much. Uh, without really understanding why a consumer would purchase that versus later on, I realized, well, I need to have an emotional trigger. I also need to find a way to capture the attention of my customer. A really good example I love to give is like, instead of saying to my daughter, to my daughter, stop spending all my money. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That is going to get a reaction, Right. right? And the consumer is going to to click on that. I mean, it's not necessarily the best example because I'm not sure if you would want to give that to your daughter, but that it's more cheeky and it has more sarcasm. So that's just the first step. And then there's like all the other elements, right? So, um, what it takes to have a listing that's going to perform well on Etsy, the pricing aspect, um, the marketing aspect within Etsy. So there's just a lot of different combination and hacks and elements that are going to help you be successful. But again, like I just did not know that because 
I had a very different idea of what it took to get a customer through the front door. Absolutely. And understanding those algorithms. I mean, we're being controlled by AI right now. So if you're not responding promptly, if you're not shipping promptly, if you're not getting good reviews, all of those things, all those boxes have to be checked or you will not succeed. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, something as simple as making sure that you're replying back to your customer in a timely manner. Absolutely. And finding ways for you to get five star reviews really early on. And I think a a sort of like an objection that I hear a lot from folks is that, oh, well, Etsy's saturated or Etsy's not what it used to be. But something that we forget is that, for instance, T-shirts, something as simple as T-shirts. People have been selling t-shirts for almost a hundred years now, right? I mean, I mean, I don't know when t-shirts were first made, but I think like as early as like the 1920s, right? So it's had a progression, but people are still buying t-shirts to this day. So it's just a matter of like understanding how to adapt with the market. If something is selling, it will always sell. It's just, you have to understand how to make it relevant to what's going on in the world and how to make it relevant to your customers and also how to adapt, like you said, to the algorithms. Great advice. What do you say is the best way to get started? I would say if you're interested in learning more, you would, you should check out my coaching program and uh, yeah, reach out to me. I would love for, to learn about your journey, to learn about what you're trying to do and uh, have you on board and have you quit your nine to five or have you reached whatever financial goals you're going after? It's a very attainable goal nowadays. If you have the right coach, you can figure out a way to do it. And everybody is looking envious at their former colleagues who have started their own business. And now, like you said, is a digital nomad and it's a good place to be. Tell me quickly about your course. What's included? What will folks get if they purchase it? So my course has everything to take you from A to Z and it's an over the shoulder training where essentially I gave you all the tools that I personally use in my business Mm -hmm. in order to find those winning listings. And what a winning listing is, is a listing that's gonna get you all these different cells. So that's the first part. And then it includes, bi-monthly coaching with me where it's a group coaching setting and you are able to have direct access to me and ask whatever questions you have and then additionally from that I'm always sort of helping my students like reviewing their Etsy store and providing them with insights it's like this is working this is not just to get them unlocked and I mean people are getting amazing results I've already had multiple students who were able to quit their 95 just in as little as like a couple months. So it's just a matter of having, first of all, the initiative and also being just fed up with your current situation and being willing to give it a try. Exactly. Sometimes anger is a good thing. It yes. can motivate you and it's leverage to get out of the rut that you're in and get onto the road to success. Luna Vega, thank you so much for joining us today here on Spotlight. My and pleasure. Logan, my pleasure. And I'm Logan Crawford thanking you at home for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.